Do I look fat? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to say the camera slims you quite a bit. Oh! <laughs> We're talking about Pizza Patio, uh, which is a pizza place that we went to in St. Ives this evening. We've just come back from there. It's about 15 minutes away from Hale. We're in Premier Inn in Hale, if you haven't watched any of these other videos in Cornwall. And uh, we had a pretty piss poor meal, <laughs> to be fair. Um, the, the place is called Pizza Patio. Now... Let's start off with the walk down the stairs. It's lovely. You, you come down and you're greeted by wonderful staff. Our uh, guy, what's his, not Luigi, uh, Lucio, Luch, Lucio, Luc Laurie. Laura, Lauren. Something like that. It was something yeah. like Laurie, wasn't it? Yeah, Laurie. Laurie, Laurie. Yeah. I think it was Laurie. And he was and actually from Cornwall. And he was actually from Cornwall, but he's lived in London and Nottingham, so he knows <laughs> what it's like. Um... <laughs> He, it was very nice, you know, he was sympathising with us about getting pulled over by the police. And he said, yeah, you know, they just got nothing to do down here. They don't have crime down here. <laughs> so, you know, they, they pull, they tried to get their statistics up or something by um, pulling people over and giving people parking tickets and things. So they have traffic wardens for that. And they go, yeah, but the police don't have anything to do. So they give people parking tickets. What the hell? Uh, what what borough of London would you ever get a policeman wasting his time giving somebody a parking ticket? Anyway, Pizza Patio. They've got a place in Hale. We saw it passing um, uh, as we went to St Ives. They've got a place in Newlyn. No idea where that is. And they've got a place in St Ives. That's the one we went to. Looks great. You go downstairs. Looks It's decked out really nice. You know, wooden chairs, wooden tables. Nice looking bar, leather stools, um, uh, nice plates, nice atmosphere, and then they give you the menu, and that's where everything just starts going wrong. Now it's called Pizza Patio. What 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 would you envisage you get when you go to a place called Pizza Patio? Patio windows? No, of course not. It's a restaurant, right? So. Pizza, oh yeah, pizza, you know, patio, oh, window into the world of pizza. Oh, what a great name. Except I'm looking through this menu and there's only one page of pizzas and the rest of it is other stuff. Okay, I'll go into this into more detail, but okay. Now, where would you think the cuisine Creole chicken would fit? Bit. You need to think it would be a, a, a French dish, um, maybe a Mexican dish, Caribbean dish, or perhaps an Italian dish. Maybe somewhere you'd buy truly authentic Italian food. And that's what they had as you walked in. It said, we offer truly authentic Italian food. Not there. Not there. Not an Italian place, right? last place you would think of having Creole chicken. Not only did they say that, they said that the chicken was infused with spices, Cajun spices. Surely if you have Cajun spices, you get Cajun chicken, not Creole chicken, right? <laughs> you have Creole spices for Creole chicken, right? <laughs> and, uh, okay, 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 here's another example. Chinese duck. <laughs> <laughs> pizza. <laughs> oh god. Uh, Chinese duck pizza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, that's so Italian. Okay, okay, so forget about all these other non Italian things. How about getting to the root of Italy? What's Italy famous for? What do they have that you don't get in other countries? How about prosciutto? You know, Parma ham. Uh, one of the classic dishes for a starter is prosciutto ham uh, wrapped around melon. No, that, that's not on the menu. Okay, so how about prosciutto on a pizza? Prosciutto on anything? Asked the waiter. <laughs> sorry, we don't uh, serve... Uh, sorry, what ham was that? <laughs> Parma ham. 
or prosciutto, you know, it doesn't have to be from Parma, just any prosciutto. Ah, we don't serve that. Instead, we have gammon. <laughs> gammon? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Gammons are cooked meat, right? It's like a thick cut of bacon. And prosciutto is a raw, um, uncured piece of meat. It's, it's naturally uh, uh, uncured and it's just preserved with salt. And it's just left there for a year, right? And, and it absorbs all its flavour from what the pig ate during its lifetime. Gammon is just salted, cooked pork and uh, I was like are you having a laugh are you having a laugh and not only that they copied half of the menu of Pizza Hut uh, what was there there was um, barbecue chicken barbecue chicken yeah that's On right with, uh, with with sweet corn and yeah. barbecue sauce there was the Hawaiian the Hawaiian pizza, pizza which they had yeah, called Tropicana classic, or something yeah Tropicana yeah that's right ham and uh, pineapple Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sorry, not ham, gammon. And yep. <laughs> so, don't do ham here, we do gammon. Um, and uh, well, one thing I always hate about Italian restaurant is when they have spaghetti bolognese uh, on the menu. Now, if you're, in a, uh, if you're a classic Italian restaurant, uh, you know that bolognese does not exist, but... but it's not an Italian dish. You go to Italy, I promise you, you go to any decent restaurant in Italy, they don't have anything called spaghetti bolognese. They have something similar, which is where spaghetti bolognese came from. It's like a bastardized version of it. And uh, it's, it's called ragu. Yeah, In Italy, it's called ragu. And it's um, it, they usually use a spaghettini pasta or they use a tagliatelle pasta sometimes fettuccine pasta and they have a really nice fresh tomatoes pureed with some nice cuts of minced beef real cuts of minced beef and that's it simple dish classic drizzled with olive oil on top bolognese that doesn't exist uh, if, if you live on spaghetti bolognese I'm sorry I don't care how much of an expert you are on spaghetti bolognese, it's not an Italian dish. It's like uh, pork balls from your Chinese takeaway. It's not a Chinese dish, <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, so, okay, my snottiness and my ego <laughs> out of the window. Uh, it was a crap menu. I, okay, so what did I order? I, I've, got, I've got the receipt here. Uh, I ordered... A mozzarella and tomato salad for four pound ninety five for for my side or a starter. Usually it's a starter, but they put it down as a side. Now, what I would normally expect is some nice cuts of tomato, some nice cuts of mozzarella, made fresh, hopefully. But if not, then maybe just some really nice mozzarella and some olive oil on top and some balsamic vinegar. Really simple. Instead, I got a bed of unwashed spinach. You can tell it's unwashed because there was gristle and uh, this, uh, uh, not seaweed, it's like, um, it's like silt, you know, it's like sand. It tastes like sand, but it's black and you get stuck in your teeth and it, you bite down on it and it feels like salt, except it doesn't dissolve in your mouth and it doesn't crunch. Instead, it breaks your teeth. Right. And I had, um, on top of that, I had the tomatoes. I had some small uh, cherry tomatoes and I had some thicker slices of big tomato and I had mozzarella, loads of mozzarella. Fine. But then they put Dijon mustard on the thing. Who the, the no olive oil, just Dijon mustard. And it was just the weirdest combination. Who the hell puts Dijon mustard on a mozzarella and tomato salad. What kind of crazy invention is that? No one does that. Not even John liked it. No. Right? And, and John knows nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> and even he said it was crap. Didn't he? Oh, yeah. It was really yeah. crap. And now what did John have? Okay, he had spaghetti carbonara. 
and that costs eight pound fifty. That that's quite expensive for a pasta. Yeah. Um, the, the the pasta I've got feedback from John himself. He says that it was uh, a, a, on the soft side. The actual pasta, yep. and the carbonara was covered in soup. Yeah, the, it was supposed to be this nice thick white creamy sauce. Instead, it was a puddle of soup, uh, and uh, the because it was so unevenly mixed, the stuff on top was really dry and flavorless, and the stuff at the bottom was just totally saturated and just the whole combination just didn't mix very well. Now, onto my main, I had a calzone bolognese. Now, I've already told you I don't like the idea of bolognese. Bolognese means from Bologna, right? And it's not from Bologna. They don't have this calzone in Bologna. Never mind. Okay, forget that. I had this calzone and it was weird because it came out and it looked like oh what John a Cornish pasty. It looked like yeah. a Cornish pasty. Even had the actual ridge of a Cornish pasty <laughs> down the edge. <laughs> exactly. It had. I don't know if you see. You, we, you'll see a Cornish pasty because we're tomorrow. We've already declared to each other. We will go Cornish pasty hunting. We will try the Cornish pasty to find out who really makes the best Cornish pasty. Now we've had references from uh, the front of house, the Michelle, Michelle at yeah. the, the front desk at Premier Inn, she's told us that this place called Philps is the best in Cornwall and it's only down the road. Convenient that, isn't it? <laughs> it's <laughs> down the road. Whereas St Ives, we've passed probably about four or five different bakers who make Cornish pasties and that's all they do. And, uh, the, you know, they, they got tight competition there. Maybe it's a touristy thing. Maybe she's right. Maybe she's wrong. We will find out. But anyway, I had my first Cornish pasty because that's what I got. It wasn't a pizza base. It was kind of a, a mix of a pizza base with Cornish pasty. Um, and like it was crimped, it, it really did taste like a, a pizza pasty. It was, it was weird, it was weird, getting like, um, it was really saucy as well, you know, the, 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 the tomato sauce was really, really saucy, it wasn't like dry, uh, it wasn't thick, it was just really saucy and the stuff just oozed out as soon as you cut through it, and uh, it was just like eating uh, an Italian Cornish pasty. Uh, which wasn't really Italian because it's the English version of what an Italian food should be. Okay, okay, okay. So you get the idea. It was pretty shockingly crap. Um, but, you know, the service was nice. Uh, drinks were standard price. We didn't drink alcohol. We drank uh, Coke and uh, a juice. My juice was one seventy five, which is kind of cheaper than London prices by about 50p. And John's Coke at 165 was uh, probably average price, to be fair, uh, for a restaurant. But still, you know, I wouldn't go back there again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think John would go back no. there again either. You know, a, a total bill came up to uh, 28 quid. It didn't include service charge, and we didn't give them the service <laughs> charge. It's a shame because the service was good, but the food was shocking. The menu was shocking, and who makes such a massive blunder? You know, it's like saying, uh, I don't mind uh, what car you drive in as long as it drives uh, authentically like a van. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it just doesn't make sense, right? It's like, you want a car that drives like a car, you don't want a car that drives like a 10 ton lorry, do you? It's it kind of, you feel a bit cheated, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, you don't want a, a car that uh, goes as fast as uh, a Volkswagen Polo uh, and be uh, paying gas prices like you would do for a 10 ton truck, for instance. So you feel kind of cheated out of it. And that's how I kind of felt tonight. I just felt kind of cheated by this place. It's called Pizza Patio, the VAT number, <laughs> 75043739. Uh, 
so you can look them up on uh, you know limited company's house or whatever uh, their phone number in Hale uh, if you should like to uh, uh, order some takeaway tonight uh, is 01736 753 745 and I'll give you the St Ives number as well just in case you happen to be in St Ives and you want a takeaway or you want to book a table it's 01736 798 235 I'm in no way trying to say hey guys you should phone up and order some fake pizzas from this place because it would be really really funny I'm just saying these are the phone numbers for Pizza Patio if you want to try this out for yourself and uh, you don't perhaps believe me <laughs> so um, that's my disclaimer over I uh, oh we got to give the uh, place a, a, a score out of 10 John um I'm going to give it six, six. Ba based on the looks. That's on the six. looks and the service. Six. Food wise, three. So you give it six overall, or six for service and place, or do you give six it six would be overall? So I'd probably say eight for the service and okay. how the place looked visually. Okay. okay. But it, yeah, six overall. Okay. Well, okay, I'll be fair, you know, I've had better service, but it was nice service. It was informal, casual, just the right mix, nice guy. Um, I would give it a 7 out of 10 for service. Uh, food, I would give a 0 out of 10 for being an authentic Italian restaurant. Uh, I would give it 0 out of 10 for quality of food. I'll give it 0 out of 10 for quality of ingredients, uh, 0 out of 10 for menu choice, uh, their actual menu setup. They had mussels, French mussels on the bloody menu. I mean, what's that all about? Oh, yeah, I'll go to Italian pizza place to eat French mussels. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, uh, overall, I give it a 2 out of 10. Because uh, at the end of the day, what the hell do you go to a restaurant for? You go to a <laughs> restaurant to eat food, right? You want somewhere nice to stay. Uh, come to Premier Inn, it looks nice enough. <laughs> you know I mean, that's, I, I could have had nicer food going to Tesco's and um, making a sandwich in this very nice place. <laughs> and eating in these fine surroundings with fine company. Uh, and I could have had telly in the background. You know? <laughs> It would have been a better experience. Uh, so I would give it, yeah, a, a two out of ten. Was it a two I gave it? Yeah, a two. Yeah. yeah. One or two. Yeah, it, it's a tough call. I'll give it a two. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt just because the service just popped up a little bit. You do like to go to places where you get served well, but at the same time, you want to go somewhere to eat. Uh, uh, and um, if you want somewhere to eat, then you want the food to be good, right? Simple. So, that's my review over. It's a very lengthy review indeed. How long have we been going for? 18 and a half minutes. Get out. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Okay. Well, you've probably had enough of me by now. So, uh, and especially John. Show them your face, John. I haven't seen you, have they? Hi, guys. There you go. Hey. <laughs> okay. So, that's it. We're uh, all done and we're out of here. Lights out. I've got the... Uh, best choice I've got the single bed John's got the double bed all to himself um, no I won't be sharing that bed with John uh, no I'm not gay no John is not my fiance no I'm not a, a gay closet person no I'm sleeping in this bed right here by myself okay so all that done uh, I'll see you another time until next time take care